Oh, hey guys, how's it going? So some people asked me to make a tutorial on how I made the light trails behind the Corvette in a YouTube test video that I posted. Um, so I'm just gonna do that real quick. I've tried this a bunch of times, but it keeps taking too long. So I'm gonna try and do it real fast. So we're just gonna add in a cube just to get the principle down. Real simple, just subdivide it a bunch of times. And then now we're going to select a few vertices that we want, go to our vertex groups, add in a new one, assign it, or we just call this emitter, and assign it because this is where we want our particles to come out of. So we go to our particle system, we'll add a new one, we can see that it's doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> so we're gonna work from the bottom up. We're gonna go to vertex groups and select for the density, that emitter that we want. So now we can see from this little area, it is emitting a particle, perfect. Field weights, we wanna turn gravity down to zero because we don't want our particles falling towards the ground. Children, we will come back to. Um, then under render, um, we will add in a little icosphere right here. We will add in, oops, not particle system rather. We'll just make a material for it. Material, I already made a glowing one, just emissive, like 25, looks good. Move it underneath so we don't see it because we don't want to see it in the render. We just want to instance it. So we go to our particle settings under render, halo, set it as object, and then select that icosphere. So now you can see that our particle changed from a little halo to our icosphere. Now we want to increase the scale randomness to 100 just to input some randomness. Uh, under velocity, same thing as the field weights, we want to turn that down to zero because we don't want our particle to have any motion. We want it to spawn and sit there until it dies. So to show this off a little bit, we're just going to move this over, adding in a empty and parenting our cube to said empty, um, inserting and then making this spin just sort of sort of spins around a rotation point. Now, as we can see, we kind of have a trail. It looks very bad, so we're gonna fix that. We come over to our cube, and under the particle settings, first of all, bump up those particles to like 10,000. You just add zero on the end. Um, seed, doesn't matter. Our frame start and frame end. This is, you only want to be the duration of your uh, particle simulation. Um, the longer this is, the more particles you're gonna need. So since mine's only 50 frames long, 10,000 will be perfect. Um, lifetime, I do not want them to last the entire time. I want them to only last about five frames. And lifetime randomness, you wanna crank up so that you get a nice sort of bit of a taper at the end. So now when we play it, that's looking much more like a trail, especially if we look at it from the top here. Looking pretty good. So, perfect, that is how we make a trail. The only issue, um, and also if you don't like how many sort of gaps there are between here, you want a more solid one, that's where the children come in. Add simplified, um, and it looks kind of janky because they only spawn in one plane of existence for whatever reason. I'm not quite sure why, but they do. So what we can do about that is if we come down here to our size randomness, first of all, crank that again so we get a bit more variation, as well as the roughness. Crank that all the way and it starts blending them together more and it looks just a lot better. Also, we can come to clumping and add a positive clump and it will make them all clump up around the end, giving us yet again a better uh, taper. You can see this more if in our particle settings we set it a longer lifetime, about 10. And now we come back and see you get more of a taper there. So pretty good, not great. If you make a smaller spawn area, you will get better results. However, this is not as simple as it seems. It worked very well on just individual objects that are parented and have motion. However, if you're working on something that is using constraints, especially bone constraints, so you're putting this on an armature, like for instance, the car rig, it breaks. So if you're putting this on a character that's using a flaming sword, if you want particles coming off your um, light, your tail lights, it will not work, and I will show you what I mean. We come here, we come to our Corvette, same thing. I've set up just a few faces here as a vertex group, and we're going to add it a little particle system, same thing, field weights down to zero for gravity, 
our vertex group density, we just want to be that group. So see, it's now spawning in the right location. Perfection. Um, children will come back to render again, object. We will just select our icosphere. Perfect. Scale randomness all the way up. Uh, velocity all the way down. And then crank up the particle amount, decrease the simulation time, and decrease the lifetime and increase the lifetime randomness. Bunch of stuff, but it's pretty simple. Now, when we go down to cache, and we have an animation built into this, I probably should have showed that first. Um, under here, it's just a simple, goes from this end to the other end. Real simple animation, just goes driving along. Very simple, very easy. So now that we've got the particle system set back up, you'd imagine that it would follow just like the cube. However, Blender does not like bone constraints. So we come in here and we just jump to the middle and it bunches them all up on every frame. So if we go back a frame, see the lights are there, it spawns some particles. Next frame, spawns more particles. However, if we look at our first example back over here, although it's right here and we're just going through, it's spawning particles in between each keyframe. So right here to here, it spawns frame or spawns uh, particles. So the issue is with the bone constraint. However, there is a fix. I didn't know about this before. Um, before what I was doing is baking the animation, coming in here, baking the wheel rotation using the uh, animation, the car rig add-on, baking all that. Um, it's a free add-on. If you don't know how to use it, uh, I can make a tutorial on that as well. Um, but baking all that, then coming to the object and going object, animation, bake action, visual keying, clear constraints, clear parent, blah, 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 and applying that and pretty much baking the car to only move as this cube is moving, where it's no longer following the path. It just happens to perfectly be following the path. Very convoluted, very difficult to change after the fact, like it's not procedural or dynamic at all, which is very much my workflow. I don't like baking things in that I cannot change afterwards. So there is a solution, however. You just come down here, come to your bone constraint, disable it. Now, still with the armature selected, if you just come and add a regular constraint, add in, follow path, select your Bezier curve, same thing, fixed position, follow curve, animate, and negative Y. Now, same thing, come to the very first frame, offset factor, of zero, go to the end, offset factor of one, insert, perfect. So now it's doing the same thing, it's following the same curve and everything. We are going to come and rebake our particle system. Boom, and now, when we play this back through, come over here, beautiful. We have nice particles following as a trail, which is Fantastic. And what's nice about this as well is that it does work with the controls of the car rig. One thing it doesn't work with that you'll have to go back to your bone constraint is to bake the car steering and car rotation. Um, but that's simple. That's one very easy bake. But it does work with drift and with uh, elevation. We come over here and it's now drifting out. Even though it's not following this path anymore, we can see it's following the drift. Now, there is a little bit of stepping which isn't great, and you can see that quite clearly in my other Corvette video, but this is the best I can do with this system. Um, but it's nice that it does support the uh, drifting option. You can see here, it's coming around. Not a very accurate drift at all, but it does support it. And using things like the children setting, just again, setting it to simple, um, setting the randomized size up to one, roughness to one, and clump to one, you kind of lose that stepping quite a bit. It's still visible and it's still not great, but it's definitely better than what it was. Um, but there is a system that beats all of this out and is much easier to do as well. I will show you that now. So to use this new system, we do not use this one. It works perfectly just with the um, bone constraint. Come over here and re-enable this follow path. Um, 
And actually we can even get rid of this particle system because it does not use particle systems at all. There is a fantastic, phenomenal add-on by Calypse. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but it is great. And it is called Magic Trails. I have the pro version. It's like $5. I highly recommend you buy it. However, the free version does come with a lot of this as well. So we can just add in a, well, I'm just gonna make a new collection for it because that's what I like to do. A new short trail. I find the gradient trail looks very nice, especially for cars. It comes with a whole bunch of ones like disco, dot, electric, flame, all this cool stuff. Um, just press OK. And this is our trail right here. You literally just assign it where you want. Cursor to select, oopsies, sorry. Selection to cursor, rather. And you can get a little bit of a glimpse about what this is going to look like. We just go in here, rotate it down, scale it to fit our size, perfect. Parent it to the car here, same thing. Add in a, another trail, same thing. Select the empty, not the trail. Rotate it, scale it, and parent it. And now, when we play through our animation, we have light trails. It's literally that simple. Now these I did in half a second, so they don't look great. But this is phenomenal. You can come in here, you can change this to be more of a red looking color. You can add modifiers to them. So you can add in some sort of uh, solidify to make it actually have thickness as well, which looks pretty nice. Yeah, this is a fantastic add-on. You can come in here and you can add in, well, actually, if we just select the actual here, we can add particle systems. So we can add in a um, electric arcs here, add in a particle system, more electric arcs, boom, done. As you can see here, it just works super well, like fantastically well. I highly recommend you use this as opposed to using the particle systems because it's way less uh, resource demanding. Um, it's a lot more customizable. Um, it's just really simple and you can support someone that made a great add-on. And again, the free version does support a lot of these same features. However, I do recommend just giving him a few dollars for this great add-on. He says he's going to keep uh, supporting it. I've actually DM'd him on Twitter. Seems like a great guy, a lot of support. Um, and yeah, there is some issues like I found like pressing control Z. Oh, it works now. Okay, so he must have fixed that. I found that using it with car rigs, pressing Control Z or undoing um, one of the bakes, which is Crash Blender entirely, but he seems to have fixed that. So perfect. See, he's keeping updated. He's adding more presets. So the pixel trail is super cool here. We can just add that in. Um, press OK here. Again, we'll just take this bad boy, parent it right to this, right like that. Boom. Spin that around. Looks super cool. It's also viewport, so it kind of looks a bit janky, but if when it's just rolling by here, it looks great. And best of all, super customizable. Go in here, boom. Now it's some sort of cool looking thing like that. Again, great add-on. I highly recommend to use this, but the particle systems are there as well. Um, this looks like it's still quite, uh, quite long, but I hope that it answers your questions, and also I highly recommend you use this system. It is far better than the particle system, um, and it looks much nicer as well. Very customizable. Uh, you can also change the stiffness, or if you're using a time offset one, you can change the length of it. Um, he does give some tips about keeping them within certain uh, constraints. However, oh, see, there you go. There's the issue. Pressing Control Z breaks it. Um, so I guess it's the end of the tutorial, guys. Um, I hope you liked it. Let me know if you want to see anything else like my anime toon shader or uh, how to use that car rigging add-on. I'm assuming you already know if you're asking how to make light trails for cars, but if not, let me know. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>